I made this nifty science fiction print. Took me about 10 minutes and I'm gonna go nice and slow. So if you're new to Affinity Photo and you're a little intimidated by it, I'm gonna show you exactly how I made this. Let's jump in. I like Affinity Photo and I use it quite a bit, but if you're not familiar with Affinity Photo, it can be a little bit intimidating, especially when you see professionally done videos like this. You know, this is a marketing video for Affinity Photo and it can be a little bit intimidating because there's literally thousands of different tools you can use. So in this video, I'm gonna do a very, very easy walkthrough on how you can do some easy artifacts using Affinity Photo. Okay, so let's jump in and get started with Affinity Photo. I'm gonna create a new document. So I'm gonna to go to File and then New. And now it's going to give me a bunch of options here, but I can just also insert my width and my height right here. So I'm just gonna do page width will be 2000 and page height will be 1500. My DPI, which is my dots per inch will be 300 and I'll click Create. That'll get me a nice easy palette. Now, if you'd like to use a transparent background, what you can do is just go up to the document button right at the top and then you can just click transparent background. That just changes now the background to a transparent background instead of having the white. From here, I'm going to insert my first picture. So I'm going to go to file and place and then I'm going to select my photo. Okay, so I've selected my item and now if I just click, it's going to push it into the picture here, but it's gonna be massive. What'll happen is the picture will be like really, really big. So I'm just gonna do control Z and I'm going to undo that. And what I'm gonna do instead is file place. And when I select it, I'm now gonna drag with my mouse the size of the picture that I want. So I can make it as large or as small as I'd like. And I like that option much, much better. Now I can move it around and I can make it as large or as small as I want. I don't actually have to hold anything down to make it larger or smaller. The uh, proportions are automatically constrained, so it's gonna stay good. It won't look all like warped. So now I can just move this in. I'll make it look like that. So there's my first picture that I wanna import. Okay, so next up, we're going to work on erasing the sky. Now, if you're new to Affinity Photo, what'll happen is you're gonna select this little eraser tool and you'll select the erase brush. You'll make it a good size. And then what'll happen is when you hover over, nothing's happening. And so the reason for that is you need to select the layer. So over on the right hand side, I need to actually select the layer. And then I'm also gonna right click on the layer and I'm going to go down to rasterize. And that's going to change this now into a workable picture. And you can see now as I hover over with my eraser tool, it's showing exactly what the effect will be. I really like this. And you can just hover over and see what is going to happen. So that's one option. If I just click it, you'll see that now I've got a big hole there in the middle of the sky. I'll go edit undo. And another option with the eraser tool, I'm gonna to click and hold. I can go into the background erase brush and now you'll see it's trying to figure out what to erase. Now I'm not actually doing anything yet, I'm just hovering over, but you can see it's pretty smart. Now I've got the tolerance set to 10. If I were to increase this to say 86, and I were to go in, you'll see it's pretty much taking everything out. So we don't want the tolerance to be that high. You'd have to monkey around with the tolerance depending on your photo. For me, 10 seems to be pretty good. It seems to work and actually take out the sky without taking out anything else. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm gonna bite the bullet and actually click the button. And now we can see it's starting to erase as I hold down on the mouse key and I drag along and I remove the sky, pretty nice. We can see there, it didn't capture all of it. It is a computer, so it's not perfect. But overall though, it's trying its best to remove. Now it got almost all of it. So what I'm just gonna do now is just change this to the brush, the eraser tool. And this just blindly erases everything. So now I can just get in here and I can erase the last little drips and drips. Now there's a little piece right there at the bottom and I wanna make sure that I didn't miss anything. So what I do is I create a new layer. So I'm gonna click this little button over on the right hand side, it says add a layer. And I'm gonna put the layer down underneath. 
and I'm going to select the layer that's underneath and I'm going to simply fill it with a color. So here's the flood tool, this little paint bucket, and I'm going to just select a color here, maybe something like a bright pink, and then I will select and I'll fill it. So you can see there I actually missed a little tiny piece here and there. And the reason I'm using pink is just because it's not in the actual photo. So now I'm going to go back into the erase tool, background erase. I'm going to make this a tiny bit smaller and I'm going to go through now and I'll be, oops, I'm on the wrong layer. So I'll go edit, undo. I'll select the right layer and now I will go in and I will actually remove the background. When you're not worried about what you're erasing, like if you're, if you're not anywhere close to an edge, then you can just use the regular eraser tool to clean this up. So I'm just going through and just clicking near. So we can see now I've got pretty decent pretty decent overlay there with the pink. Okay, so there's now my picture with no sky and I'm simply going to uncheck over on the right hand side the pink layer and you can see now we're back to basics with just a removed sky in the photo. The next piece is going to be now to place a file in the background which is a starry sky. So I'm going to go file place and I'm going to select my starry sky. Now again, if I just click it, it's going to be massive because I selected a big file. So I'm just going to use the drag button here and make it as big or as small as I want. I'm just going to make it like that. And now I can move it around. And now I will just push the layer of my front up to the top and I'll have my layer of the sky in the background. So now I've got the starry background there. I'd probably spend some time here and clean up over here with the trees as well if I'm going to be super picky on this. Okay, so now I've got the starry sky background. From there, I'm going to place the next picture, which is going to be a planet. I'm going to go File, Place, and I'm going to select my planet. Again, I'll just drag it in. There's my planet. And now I want to remove the black. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select my eraser tool that we did again and I'm going to select flood erase and what that does is that's like erases all of one color so I'm just going to select make sure my planet is selected I'm going to right click it rasterize it and then just click the black so you can see now the entire black is gone out of the entire picture so what I want to do now is create a black circle and stick it underneath because I don't really want the right far right hand side of the planet to be looking like there's nothing there. So now I'm going to draw a shape. Drawing a shape is pretty easy. On the left hand side there's a menu and you can see right near the bottom there's an ellipse tool and you can hover over the ellipse tool or click on it and you can basically pick anything here. So I'm going to pick this ellipse tool. There's rectangles, there's triangles. So I'm going to select the ellipse tool and I'm going to just drag with my mouse and you can see I can create an oval, I can create all sorts of shapes. So that would be my shape there. I'm going to click Control Z and I'm going to try that again and this time I'm going to hold on to the Shift key. The Shift key locks in the aspect. So I'm drawing a perfect circle now. Now it's pink because that was the color that I was using last time. I'm just going to hover over the planet and make sure it's the same size. There we go. And then from here, I can just simply go over to the color palette and I can just make this whatever color I want. So I'll just move it down to the bottom and you can see there instead of green or blue, I'm now making it black. I'm just simply going to select my layer here with the planet, move it above, and I've now got a planet that looks like a proper planet because there's black in there. So it's important when you're first starting out with Affinity Photo, you want to make sure that your layers, that you're aware of your layers. So over on the right hand side, you can see there I've got my ellipse layer. If I move it up, it's going to become black above it. If I move the planet above it, that's going to be the planet. So you just want to make sure you're working in the right layer. I'm going to hold down the shift key and just make this the tiniest bit smaller, just so that it's not overlaid outside of the planet. We can see there we've got the planet. So now we've got the planet and we've got the ellipse and we can right click both of those layers and I'm going to go group. So now this is like it's one picture. From there, I'm just going to zoom out a tiny bit. From there, 
I can just make this as big as I want. And remember, you can always do the undo. So for example, this is locked in, but if you hit the shift key, then you can stretch it. So it's a little bit different than Photoshop in that respect. So, you know, just go ahead and monkey around with it. You're gonna make this bigger. I'm gonna move this up to the top. So that's gonna be the planet there that we've now got. So now we've got the planet sitting up at the top. We've got the picture there. And now here's the neat part is with the planet up above, I'm just going to duplicate that layer. So I'm gonna click on the layer, right click it, and I'm going to go to duplicate. That's gonna make a second group. So now I've got a second layer. So I could move this layer around. I can do whatever I want with it. I'm gonna to go to arrange and I'm going to go to flip vertical. And that's gonna flip that one picture right above the other picture. So now I'm gonna move this down because this is actually a mirror image. So I'm gonna be using this to make my reflection. So I'm going to have this See how that little green line popped up here on the right-hand side? That's my little slider, my little guide that shows me that it's aligned. That's kind of nice as well. So I can move this, you know, get this red line. I just move it along and we can see the little line button shows up. Okay, so I'm gonna push this right to here. And then from here, I'm just gonna decrease the opacity. So the opacity is right above the planet. And I'm just gonna move this opacity slider down to like, 20 ish and that's going to be the reflection of the planet from there i'm just going to rasterize the layer i'm going to use my eraser tool and i'll just make the eraser tool a little bit bigger and then i can just go in here and i can just delete out what's sitting over top of the wharf itself because obviously the reflection of the planet would not be on the wharf so I'm just gonna do that. And again, you'd take some serious time here if you were you know, making sure that this was a high art print or something. But there we go. So now we've got the planet up above, we've got the planet down below, but you can see it's a reflection in the water. And then we've also got the starry sky in the background. So we've created sort of a neat sci-fi picture and it really didn't take us that long. If you're new to Affinity Photo, I highly recommend that you try building a specific picture. Have something in mind rather than just randomly clicking a bunch of keys. And I know it's frustrating sometimes because you're working and trying to figure it out, but I really do feel that's the best way, or at least for me it is. It's the best way to learn how to use a new program because you actually have a goal in mind. Another thing I really like about Affinity is you just buy it once and you're done. There's no subscription. So I own Affinity Photo forever. And I'll put a link in the video description below. So I hope you found that helpful. Nice little walkthrough, nice easy walkthrough on how to use Affinity Photo. And if you like that, then hopefully you'll like this video as well. More art tips on this channel. Thanks a lot for watching.